Hi, this is Kay of the Clever Someday blog. I promised a video on how to make a cut file for a stamp that doesn't come with one, so that's what I'm going to show you today. With the new snap map feature and the hinge method I showed you in my last video, it's easier than ever to target your cuts, but you still need a cut file that is the right size and shape to be able to stamp, color, and cut. There are many methods for creating these cut files, but in this video I'm going to show you an easy, low-tech method that doesn't require Inkscape and doesn't involve any math. The one limitation to this easy method is that your stamp has to be smaller than 2.4 inches in at least one direction. We start out in Design Space so we can use the Cricut to cut out a reference rectangle. We'll be cutting this out of black cardstock and using it as a background for our scan. It must be exactly 2.4 inches on one side and large enough to accommodate your stamp with the size margin you would like. So we click Insert Shapes and click on a square. The stamp I'm going to be using today is about 2 inches by 2 inches, so I'm going to stick with the 2.4 by 2.4 inch square, which is the default when you enter it into Design Space. Send it to the mat and cut from black cardstock. You can keep this square to reuse for other stamps, so this quick step is not even required every time. The next thing we're going to do is stamp our image on white paper or cardstock. It doesn't have to be perfect, and you can use any kind of or color of ink that you can see well. That's because the next step is the low-tech one of cutting around the stamp with scissors. Stampers call this fussy cutting. You will need to leave a small margin evenly around the image as you cut. It's personal preference how large a margin to use, but the larger it is, the more forgiving this technique. With the black rectangle that you cut with your Cricut and the stamp cut out that you cut out by hand, you're ready to do your scan. Center the stamped image face down on the black square and then place both of them face down on the scanner bed. So that will be the white piece against the glass and the black on top. You'll want to use the long edge of the scanner to help you square up the black rectangle. The straighter the scan, the more accurate this technique. Don't place the rectangle against the short edge of the scanner bed as it's important to scan the entire 2.4 inch edge. I use 200 dpi and grayscale for the scan, but it really doesn't matter. It does matter that you save as JPEG or PNG and that you save it somewhere you can find it. Okay, that looks pretty straight. I'm going to um, crop this area. This is not absolutely necessary, but it will speed up the cleanup. And then I'm going to do the final scan. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to bring it into Cricut Design Space. So I'm going to click on Upload Images. Click Upload Image. Browse. I know that I left that in my Pictures folder. Then I'm going to click on Simple Image. Continue. I'm going to click Outside and Inside. And I'm going to look for any other little blips. I think my scanner bed was dirty. Normally you won't have to do this, but I've got a little bit of dust there. That looks pretty good. I'm going to continue. I'm going to save as cut image. Give it a name. I'll stamp. And then save. And now I'm going to bring that into my document. Okay, what you want to notice here is that every image comes into Cricut Design Space at 2.4 inches by default. So that's why we use 2.4 inches because when we do that it automatically comes in at the correct size. So all we have to do now is click on Contour, get rid of that rectangle, and now we have our stamp shape at the perfect size. Okay, so we can get rid of this rectangle that we don't need anymore. And the only thing left to do is correct for the fact that we scanned the back side of the stamp. To do this, we go to the Edit tab and click the Mirror button to flip it horizontally. Now it's in the correct configuration as the original stamp. That's it. That's all we need to do to save a cut file for a stamp. It's ready to use with the hinge method or snap mat, complete with an offset. Hope you found this helpful. 
Please give this video a thumbs up, follow my channel, and stop by my Clever Someday blog for more die cutter tips and tricks, including the easy steps to adapt this technique to designs larger than 2.4 inches. Thanks for watching.